The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Declan Carolyn. I am co-chair of ECR Community and general manager of ECR Ireland. And you're very welcome to the ECR Circular Economy webinar series. Just a bit of housekeeping before we start. Um, please type any questions that you have into the chat function and time permitting at the end of the webinar, we'll do our best to answer them. Otherwise, if you don't, are not able to talk during the webinar, we'll follow up directly by email or another conversation. You're very welcome to what we're describing as a series of webinars on the circular economy. And by joining these three webinars, delegates can expect to gain the following. Firstly, to gain an understanding of what the circular economy actually means. Um, we have supplied some pre-reading material, um, uh, which is available on our website and in the invitation to the webinars. But we will allude to further that information as we go through the webinars. Secondly, to get an up-to-date position on the work which the EU is doing within this area. Thirdly, understand what consumer expectations are within the circular economy and what their understanding of what the circular economy means. And finally, to learn about some existing practices that are currently being carried out by retailers and suppliers and manufacturers throughout Europe. Let me just go through today's agenda. Though. Myself and Shay McGann of ECR Community will give a quick introduction and an overview of ECR. Then we're delighted joining us today. We have Isabel from Eurocommerce and Eva from AIM, who will give an overview of the EU circular economy package. Following that, Emily from ECR France will go through some case studies from France that were recently conducted to give us an idea of what some, what companies are doing in this area. And finally, then we'll have a look at the Q&A. So I just want to talk a little bit about what is ECR. ECR stands for Efficient Consumer Response, and it is both a collaboration model and, a, and an association. Our mission statement is transforming the way we work together to fulfill consumer wishes better, faster, and at less cost. And our purpose, is to facilitate and support retailers, manufacturers and service providers to collaborate at both a national and international level. And in practice, that means that ECR nationals across the world are using this collaboration model for working on topics that are most relevant to their members, such as category management, on-shelf availability, supply chain and sustainability. And ECR is also an association ECR Community is the global association for all ECR organizations in the retailer and consumer product group sector. And you can see a list of those on the screen now around the world. We are a not-for-profit membership association. The only members of ECR Community are the ECR nationals, expert groups, and industry associations. And then companies themselves are members of the ECR local networks. Our objectives within the ECR community is to act as a forum for our ECR nationals to share knowledge and successful initiatives, to provide a support network for ECR nationals, promote the output of these nationals and expert groups, and promote and always promote the ECR collaboration model as a better way of working together between trading partners. You see on, on the right our focus areas for 2019 and 2020, and each of our focus areas produce some output in some way, shape or form, whether these are best practice reports, pieces of research or, or, um, or, or academic studies. The focus area we're concentrating on today is the circular economy. So hi, I'm Shay, I'm the project manager um, for ECR Community. So I just wanted to give you an overview of, I suppose, what the circular economy is and why everyone's talking about it. Um, as the Alan MacArthur Foundation says, we are really starting to reach um, a way of doing things is, is reaching its limits. So what can we do um, to slow that down or prevent it? Um, and a circular economy is a really good um, way to tackle this. Um, so it's a new way to design, make and use things within the boundaries of our planet. 
and how can we do this in business in all in everyone's business everyone can start to look at um, reducing waste and maximizing the use of their resources so basically shifting from a linear economy which is taking resources making something using them disposing them and then in the process creating a lot of pollution and moving to a more circular economy um, so how does it apply to your business so I suppose it depends if you're a producer or a user or a disposer of um, goods and materials. So if you're a producer, you can look at reducing the amount you produce, but, but, but not reducing the value, like you're going to start creating more valuable products. Um, you can look at the design of your products and whether that's the, the, the kind of packaging or whether that's the product itself. Can they be designed um, better with less resources? Um, so if you're in the, the use space, I suppose you can encourage um, reuse or look at um, uh, products as a service. You can optimize the product lifetimes, um, which is which is, I suppose, what, a while ago we, we kind of went down the, the path of, of creating products that would only last a certain amount of time. So I think we need to change that mindset. And then I suppose if you're a disposer, you can look at the materials that you take in, um, can they be used by another business um, and, to, and that business will create value. Um, and we need to, and as a disposer, you need to kind of encourage new markets for recycled materials. Um, so I just wanted to link in with the sustainable development goals. Um, lots of businesses are currently aligning all of their activities to these goals. And the circular economy, it particularly um, links in with goal number 12 and that's sustainable consumption and production. But the circular economy is, I suppose, it's a kind of catch-all term for so many different projects, and they all link into all the different goals. So if you're, you're doing work in this area, there's a high chance that you'll be able to impact a, a wide range of goals. And then the, the, the EU circular economy package, which um, we're gonna talk more about today, um, links nicely in with these goals as well. So it's definitely something that you should be looking at in your business and how you can link all of these different areas. Um, so I'm just gonna hand over to Emily now, who's our ECR um, community uh, lead for the, our uh, focus area on the circular economy. Thank you, Che. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Emily. I'm head of operation at Institut de Commerce, which manages uh, the ECR initiative in France. Uh, we just wanted to explain you uh, why we are working on uh, this uh, focus group on circular economy. Uh, at first, for France, we began to work uh, in 2018 on circular economy project, as uh, circular economy implies a lot of collaboration. Uh, and beginning uh, 2019, uh, we um, discussed with other ECR local organizations on uh, what we are doing individually in our uh, local organization. Uh, and uh, we, we discovered that other ECR were also working on circular economy projects, but not all of them. So we organized in June a workshop with ECR Austria, China, France, Greece, Ireland, Italy, and Spain to understand the level of maturity of ECR localization on circular economy how more advanced countries had launched their local projects and to define our roadmap for ECR community. Inside this roadmap, uh, we decided to design a webinar series with a, a steering committee. Uh, and uh, the, the idea of this webinar series was to increase general awareness and knowledge around the circular economy in the retail and consumer goods sector but also to support uh, our members to rapidly reinvent the way consumer products are sold. Uh, and so the webinar series was um, uh, prepared and uh, this is the first uh, webinar uh, and we are really uh, thankful to Eurocommerce and AEM uh, to have accepted to participate to this first webinar. So now uh, I would like to introduce you to Eva Schneider. Ah, oh, sorry, I forgot that one. Uh, this is the circular economy focus group, uh, which has been working um, uh, since this summer on this webinar. So, Che from ECR community, 
myself, uh, Sylvia and Car Carolina from ISIA Italy, and Teresa from uh, ISIA Austria. So now, um, please uh, uh, welcome Eva and Isabel from Eurocommerce and AEM. Okay, hello everybody. Um, welcome to our presentation on the EU circular economy. Um, Isabel and I we will give you an update um, on this topic from a retailer and brand manufacturer perspective together in this presentation. Um, next slide, please. Um, so first, um, quickly the structure of our presentation. So first of all, we will introduce our um, two associations, Eurocommerce and AIM, the European Brands Association. We will then give you a kind of a recap on the circular economy package 1.0 and also important um, issues that are still on the table for 2020. We will then um, go more into detail into um, uh, yeah, things that we know about the European Green Deal um, and about the upcoming circular economy package 2.0. Um, we will end with some examples um, from the industry um, in terms of solutions and approaches in the circular economy, um, both from a retailer and brand owner's um, side. And then if we have time, we are of course um, also available for questions and answer session. Okay, um, I would give to Isabel to introduce now um, her association. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Thank you very much. I'm Isabel Morizzi from uh, Eurocommerce. And so as uh, Eva uh, introduced it, we will go with a brief overview of what our organization stands for. So you can see also where we're coming from. So Eurocommerce, we are the EU Association of Retail and Wholesale in Europe. We represent the sector's interest before the European institution. So that's the European Commission, the European Parliament, and the European Council. Uh, how do we represent interest uh, well, through a platform is that we have a membership-based association and we are doing hardcore lobbying and advocacy. We're also trying to increase the visibility and reputation of the sector towards the regulators, trying to emphasize the role of uh, the retail and, and wholesale in the EU economy as shown in the in the slide here, so how much we present in terms of uh, companies, in terms of work and jobs, and in terms of EU GDP. I think it has increased to 11% now, so this slide is a bit up to date. But pro 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 emphasizing the fact that the industry is uh, quite visible and active on the EU front and, and contributing greatly to the, um, to the EU economy. And this is the core, uh, I would say, um, rational and narrative we provide to the European Commission, and then it's declined in different, uh, uh, in different subjects. And I mean, particularly, particularly in charge of uh, the environment and sustainability. If you go to the next slide, I'm just going to get briefly uh, to give you the overview of the type of members we have. So we represent national associations, uh, and we're proud to say that we are in all of the EU member states, England included. We'll see how it goes in a few months. Uh, we also represent front runners who are companies' uh, memberships, as you can see it, see here. And we have affiliated federation based on their topics. This is um, this is an overview. Our staff is around 20 people, so that means that we have we work in different committees, going from digitalization to work with the supply chain up to international trade and taxation, product policy, and so on and so forth. Um, I leave you the floor to I leave the floor to Evana. Yeah. So introduction of AIM, the European Brands Association. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so as European Brands Association, we represent European manufacturers of branded consumer goods on key issues that affect their ability to design, distribute, and market their brands. So we have very um, kind of broad um, overview on topics. So uh, in my um, position, I'm the sustainability man manager um, at AIM, so dealing with um, all the topics related to the circular economy and sustainability. So um, overall, um, we comprise in our membership 50 um, direct corporate members and 20 national associations. And all in all, we represent 2,500 companies 
ranging from SMEs to multinationals. Um, so our members, of course, are heavily investing into R&D and innovation. Um, that places them actually at the fifth in the EU rank for um, EU R&D investment. Um, our, all our members are uh, branded goods, um, consumer goods um, companies, and uh, they are united in their purpose to build strong brands. And that, uh, by doing this, of course, the, the focus is on, on the consumer, and that is also where the circular economy comes in, of course. Uh, next slide, please. So this is um, an overview on our corporate members. Um, as you can see, it is um, a quite broad membership from food to non-food. Uh, some luxury brands, uh, textiles, um, toys, cosmetics, etc. Next slide, please. And this is an overview of our national associations um, in total 20. Okay, thank you. So I give uh, back the word to Isabel. So with this in mind, uh, it means that a main action is also at EU level. So we wanted to also pro uh, provide some of input on what's happening at the moment. So very briefly, because we'll go back into this slide a bit later, but where is it come was the European Green Deal coming from and how the, will that impact the future regulation on circular economy? Um, it, I think we need to go back into the European elections that happened in May. So the results had, uh, of the European election had two main trends. One was there's a lot of newcomers to the European politics that have been elected. And secondly, we can see a kind of a greening of the European Parliament. So the, the environmental and sustainability issues will be quite high on the political agenda. This has been translated into the Commission President uh, mandate and a uh, proposal for a new Commission, whereby Ursula von der Leyen uh, proposed to have a European Green Deal published within the 100 days of her entering into the office. To do so, she mandated a specific uh, Commission Vice President Executive, Mr. Timbermans, to kind of lead this cross-cutting um, European Green Deal. The slide you have here on the on the screen is actually summarizing the different aspects of this European Green Deal, which will represent up to two-thirds of the European budget. And you can see that when it comes to greening the European economy, uh, every aspect of the economy and the industrial and just industri industry is, be is being tackled. Uh, we will discuss specifically the transition to a circular economy because it's been uh, identified as the number one priority, but that goes hand in hand with everything else you can see here. But I'll go into detail later on. I think we need also to go back into uh, where where is the commission coming from and what do we can we learn from the previous mandate and how that would be implied into this new mandate. And for to do that, I will leave the floor to uh, to Eva. Um, next slide, please. Exactly. So, first of all, a recap, as Isabel said, on the Circular Economy Package 1.0, which actually was launched in 2015. So, this Circular Economy Package actually included the waste legislation. Um, furthermore, also uh, some other legislative and non-legislative key actions um, under the Action Plan for the Circular Economy. So first, uh, when it comes to the waste legislation, we have here four pieces of legislation where two definitely are very relevant to our members, to brands and retailers. So the first one, the Waste Framework Directive, um, which uh, referred to um, lists or indicates waste management, recycling targets of municipal waste, EPR schemes and the minimum requirements. Um, on this, the legislation states that the Commission has to publish guidelines on EPR schemes and the modulation of um, EPR fees. Um, this work started this year. Um, the Commission, together with the consultancy, uh, conducted uh, different stakeholder workshops and um, consultations um, to um, actually get to these guidelines for eco modulation. Um, this work has finished now, and we um, expect these guidelines um, to be published in the beginning of 2020. Um, when it comes to the, to the Packaging and Packaging Waste Directive, um, 
This directive included um, or includes the new packaging recycling targets for 2025 and 2030. It also outlines, and this is again where um, also next year will be important, outlines the review of the essential requirements for packaging listed in the annex um, with the possibility to revise them if necessary. Um, so this work has also started in 2019, actually together with the work on the eco-modulation of EPR fees for packaging. Um, again, after different stakeholder consultations and workshops, um, this report is now being finalized. Um, based on this, the Commission will actually conduct an impact assessment of different options for the essential requirements. Um, and this will be accompanied by um, further round of consultations also in the beginning of 2020. Um, following this, the Commission will communicate um, a recommendation to the European Parliament and Council before the deadline of the 31st of December 2020. So this will be most likely accompanied by a legislative proposal at the end of next year. So both of the directives were published in the official journal in June 2018, but we can clearly see two main points that um, will come um, out in 2020. Um, yeah, further uh, legislative but also non-legislative uh, key actions, um, if uh, I may put it like this, um, within the context of the circular economy uh, included the uh, eco-design, um, eco-design working plan, um, mainly for household appliances. These eco-design measures actually promote the repairability, durability and recyclability of products in addition to energy efficiency. So, for example, within this eco-design working plan, um, we see that um, the scale for um, energy efficiency for appliances was reintroduced from A, most efficient to G, least efficient, um, but also other important information is provided through these energy labels, such as annual energy consumption, water consumption, noise level, etc. Um, so, then um, another... Um, uh, another topic um, within uh, this context is the EU plastics strategy. I think you all have heard of it. Um, it's clearly a focus on one specific material. The EU plastics strategy was published as communication in January 2018, um, and it is the first EU-wide policy framework adopting a material-specific life cycle approach to integrate circular design, use, reuse and recycling activities into the plastics value chains. Um, the strategy sets out a clear vision with also quantified objectives at EU level. Um, that means by 2030, all the plastic packaging placed on the EU market has to be reusable or recyclable. It furthermore addresses uh, topics like biodegradability, but also the presence of hazardous substances in plastics, which are still very important topics. Um, yeah, so this uh, single-use plastics directive uh, was officially uh, pub uh, published in the official journal in July 2019. We now started in 2019 already with uh, workshops and stakeholder consultations uh, organized by the European Commission um, with a consultancy. Um, yeah, these, cons uh, these workshops actually um, refer to the different definitions of the product categories, the different single-use plastic concepts, the different measures, including marking requirements and data cleanup costs, etc. Um, so this is work that already started in 2019, but will continue in 2020. Um, and Isabel will also give you a little bit uh, um, more detailed overview on this in the next slide. Um, <clears throat> Uh, furthermore, the plastics strategy, and this is also something that will come back now in the next year, the plastic strategy also outlines the objective that by 2025, 10 million tons of recycled plastics find their way back into new products on the EU market. Um, this is why the Commission launched in 2018 um, a pledging campaign among industry in order to boost the amount of recycled plastics. Um, retailers and brand manufacturers pledged, of course, next to other stakeholders of the plastics value chains. Um, the result is um, that there is a gap between the supply and demand of recycled plastics. So, where the, um, whereas the demand side, um, all the pledges added up to around 6 million tons of recycled um, content plastic. 
um, the supply side um, under specific condi conditions actually pledged for 11 million tons. So obviously there is a gap and in order to bridge this gap um, between, between demand and supply, um, to enable the right conditions actually um, to, to uh, boost the uptake of recycled um, content to 10 million tons, the Commission has launched the Circular Plastics Alliance. Um, this is the third point under the plastic strategy um, listed in the slide. So the um, Circular Plastics Alliance is, um, was set up in the beginning of this year. Um, it invited um, all the stakeholders from the complete plastic value chains um, in the different sectors, but also really including all the different um, stakeholders in the chain. So plastic producers, converters, recyclers, waste management, EPR schemes, up to the retailers and brand owners. That was facilitated by the European Commission, by DG Grow. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the purpose is to actually to come together and to start working together in order to manage the uptake of recycled content. Um, the focus lies on specific sectors, including packaging, um, building and construction, automotive, agriculture, electronics. Um, and also on specific topics that um, refer to design for recycling, recyclability, collection and sorting, and R&D. Um, in 2019, um, we already started with different working group meetings um, where all the different stakeholders were invited. Um, this resulted in drafting of a declaration for the Circular Plastics Alliance, outlining our commitments from the industry and the goals, where, what we want to achieve and by when we want to achieve it. Um, this was officially signed by a big group of, um, of uh, plastic uh, value chain stakeholders in September and we now started with the work um, setting up the governance structure um, and the real technical work will start in 2020. So within the circular economy we have another point which is referring to the product environmental footprint. Um, this is a harmonized methodology for the calculation of the environmental footprint of products and organizations. Um, this information on the environmental performance of products considers the whole supply chain. So from the extraction of raw materials to the moment the product becomes waste is reused or recycled. Um, this methodology was actually tested in a couple of, uh, in a pilot phase uh, for different sectors and products. Um, and the Commission is actually based on quite promising results of this pilot phase. The Commission is considering a potential future policy applications um, for this methodology. Um, this is also clearly um, highlighted in different talks we had and also leaked documents that we saw as a possible tool for consumer empowerment and clearly has the potential to be used for sustainability information for consumers. So this is something that um, will come up soon now. Um, we have some other actions um, within the circular economy, which refer, for example, also to um, reducing of food waste, um, uh, which resulted in the setup of the EU food waste platform. Um, but Isabel will also give you a little bit more information on this. And you have also a couple of other um, key actions within this uh, context of circular economy um, 1.0. Um, which refers to the regulation on fertilizing products, a series of actions on water reuse, the fitness check of the eco label. So not all the issues that we uh, were very much involved in, but of course that we are monitoring. Um, the Commission clearly acknowledges that more remains to be done in order to first implement the revised waste legislation. So my point number one on the slide and develop actually a functioning market for secondary raw materials. There is definitely a need to speed up the work um, that already started at EU level on issues um, such as chemicals, non-toxic environment, eco-innovation, eco-labeling, um, but also fertilizer. So this is something that will also all come up again in the Green Deal and in the Circular Economy Package um, 2.0. Yes, so please the next slide. Yes, so um, I give back to Isabel. She will um, a little bit more in detail um, outline the single-use plastics directive as well as actions on a reduction of food waste. Thank you. So what we have seen in a previous slide is that the Commission worked uh, on two bases. One was on working on product specific in, and in particular on plastic. 
And the other uh, ac uh, angle was how to prevent waste from being created and reducing the use of virgin materials. Um, in the single-use plastic directive, uh, so the question is that how does it impact specifically retailers? Well, the single-use plastic directive is, I think, a, a caddy code, as we say, uh, for what we can expect from the next commission. So the, based on the strong momentum led by the civil society, by the society, by NGOs, to a kind of uh, prevent littering for linking into the ocean, the Commission has identified 10 items uh, that there were the 10, 10 most found items uh, found on European beaches and uh, provided a series of measures depending on various factors. Factors being the availability of sustainable of more sustainable alternatives, the feasibility of changing consumption patterns, and the extent to which they're already covered by other EU legislation. So what you can see in the slide here is, is that you have 10 items, mainly food and beverage, or for, um, for some uh, hygiene products. And depending on whether they have alternatives, they, they have three sets of measures that you can have. So either it's strict bands, it's the first uh, circle or square, uh, or can consumption reduction, or better design requirements. So better design requirements imply extensive, uh, specifically for bottles, whereby we will need to have the, the caps of the, of the bottles attached to the bottle, because it's, apparently it helps into, into recycling. Uh, what we can learn from this regulation, apart from these measures, is how the putting increased responsibility to the private sector uh, to be held accountable for waste management. And this is uh, seen in two ways. One is that uh, through the singular, the single use plastic directive, there's been um, an expansion of the extended producer responsibility. So as you know, the extended producer responsibility is a system by which all of the producers, so whoever puts a product on the market, so producer, importers, manufacturers, retailers, will be uh, accountable or will provide a fee to help in the collection and sorting of such waste. So the responsibility of the products goes beyond the selling point but up to the waste management. It has two virtuous, uh, virtuous uh, impacts. One is to help with waste management and by having some, um, some support, it will also develop better designed products because the, the more recyclable the project is, the more value we'll get out of it. So this, so far this was what's working. This is how it was working. With the single-use plastic directive, there's been an extension to this, to this responsibility up to cleaning up the cost, the, up to the cost to clean up litter. So that means that even for the waste that is uh, beyond the beans and the responsibility, the, the sector will be, the private sector will be responsible for. Um, for cleaning up, so that's an extension of the responsibility, and I think it's, it is a trend that we need to to, have, to keep in mind uh, because it's a way that regulators have found to to finance uh, the greening measures. A second trend that we can get out of this uh, this directive deals also with uh, with waste, with increased reliance on deposit return schemes. So um, in the single use plastic directive, there is a high collection rate required for beverage bottles, uh, going from to 77% by 2025, up to 90% by 2030. And we won't reach the 90% the 90 of collection rate of bottles without deposit scheme. So that, that's been a quite a strong incentive without naming it to go into deposit scheme. And it goes parallel to what is uh, indicated into the waste regulation, where, whereby separate collections uh, should be installed or implemented by the 1st of January 2025 for, for different uh, products, such as paper, metal, plastic, glass, glass and textile. So what I wanted to highlight through this, through this example of the single-use plastic directive is that we can learn uh, three things for the next step. 
uh, for the circular economy and 2.0. One is a product slash material specific regulation are to be uh, are to be expected. Secondly, there is uh, increased uh, responsibility and accountability of the private sector to uh, to finance such measures. And thirdly, we can expect deposit we can expect deposit return scheme to be uh, perceived as the silver bullet solution by EU regulators. If you go to the next slide, I just wanted to inform you as well because ECR uh, members are also involved in it and we're working hand in hand with the ECR colleagues on it. So, um, there is an indication to have an EU-wide redu reduction target uh, of food waste that is echoing the, uh, the, uh, the SDGs, so the Sustainable Development Goals, to reach 30% by 2025 and 50% by 2030. To do that, your commerce is part of a EU food waste platform where we're working on what you can see on the slide. So on different measure, on different uh, measures, including how do we have harmonized measurements and we publish common guidelines at the end of October, uh, how to help into uh, developing the nation so that more changing best practices by uh, developing better infrastructure and logistics by uh, fostering fiscal incentives, so on and so forth. Um, we would like also to have a better uh, uh, approach towards state marking to avoid the confusion, but that's something that to be, uh, to be discussed or to be worked on in the coming months. And finally, uh, we have worked on sexual recommendation, including for retail recommendation on how to, uh, to, to work food waste and better with, with the other stakeholders. And the work led by the ECR on this matter has been has been greatly um, valued. So it's also a two-way relationship where if we can learn from each other, it's always welcome. So that that's what I wanted to have uh, to to highlight. Um, that's it for me, and I leave uh, Eva for the next one. No, it's still me. Um, so this is what. So to conclude, this is what we had for the circular economy uh, package that was released. Uh, four years ago, since 2015, and uh, this will continue in in 2020, as we expect a lot of different uh, measures to be uh, to be uh, announced in the coming months. So, as I mentioned before, uh, now we have a new commission that was uh, approved by the European Parliament some days ago. We now expect a full publication or of the European Green Deal. So everything, everything we say so far are based on our own experience and intelligence of, uh, of, the, of the EU institutions, but there's not much um, official yet. I think we need to wait until next week. So it's the 11th of December for the, the accurate um, um, publication and official release of the European Green Deal. So what we can see here on this slide that I've already mentioned is that this, the, the European Green Deal will encompass a lot of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of action and topics, including uh, not, uh, not necessarily uh, excluding uh, everything related to greening agriculture. So how do we work with uh, feeding more people with less resources and maybe less land due to urbanization as well. So the farm to fork uh, strategy is to be expected and to work on how to kind of uh, green such, such agricultural. We will be um, quite active on that as your commerce. I'd like also to highlight the fact that uh, our, our, our sector will be impacted by the, the biodiversity strategy for 2030 up to a point where uh, that will in, that will concern uh, uh, impact on deforestation. So both imported uh, def what they call here a deforest uh, imported deforestation, but also through deforestation at, in, at EU level. So how can we reduce the impact? Um, we're responding to consumers' concern. We have seen a trend to have a zero pollution Europe. So how do we uh, have a strategy or uh, products that are without any uh, harmful chemicals. 
So that means uh, the zero pollution is toxic free, uh, increase of maybe more labeling and so on and so forth. So that's the time of trends we can have um, that I think are quite, are quite interesting to highlight. Microplastic and uh, the, the removal of microplastic uh, in of our environment will be quite uh, quite uh, uh, important. And last but not least, the transition to a circular economy will continue its path based on what we've learned so far and maybe extend it to uh, the other R's that we have in the in the circular economy. So some so, so far that's been mainly focusing on recycle. We can expect the Commission to work more on reuse, remanufacture, and so on and so forth. Um, there will be a focus on specific, on specific uh, contribution or support towards better and more sustainable consumption, which means that uh, we will be asked as the private sector to help into to have the consumers to have more informed choice. That will be mainly in the regulator's idea to develop uh, labeling. As your commerce, we are not necessarily in favor of an EU-wide label because I think that so far there's a lot of different uh, initiatives that are working well. But this is the overall uh, view I wanted to, to highlight. Uh, I think it's up to, to Evana to get into more detail. Okay, yes, um, if you could please turn the slide, yeah. So, uh, perfect. As um, Isabel already um, said, um, we have to wait a little bit longer. Um, the draft communication on the European Green Deal is uh, expected for the 11th of December. Um, we have some information that comes from an early draft that we received um, on the European Green Deal. Um, and we just, um, as Isabel already overarched and outlined some, um, some topics, um, I would like to go maybe a little bit more into detail. So we have uh, some priorities um, that is very clearly the climate neutrality. So we will have um, the first European climate law for 2050. Uh, with the 2050 climate neutrality objective, um, this will uh, be published by March 2020, and we will see this in the communication on the European Green Deal for sure. Uh, we have um, then uh, this will also include a comprehensive plan on how to increase the EU's uh, greenhouse um, gas emissions uh, reduction target for 2030 to at least 50%, and the goal is even to get to 55%. Um, by October 2020, this is expected um, to be published. Um, other points uh, include a smart and safe zero emission mobility, promoting nature-based solutions by preserving and restoring ecosystems and biodiversity. So that uh, refers to topics already mentioned uh, by Isabel on the global biodiversity framework, which will come out at deforestation, free value chains, um, et cetera. From farm to fork, um, that refers to designing a fair, healthy and environmentally friendly food system. And according to our um, information so far, there will be a white paper to be expected in spring 2020 on this. Um, another important point is to eliminate all sources of pollution when it comes to water, air, chemicals, um, as well as mainstreaming uh, finance and investment in ensuring the just, just transition so um, there will be an action plan on green financing um, to be expected in June 2020. As I said, um, these points come from an early draft that we received um, on the communication on the European Green Deal, um, but we know it for sure by the 11th of December. If you um, go please to the next slide. So this is now the Green Deal, um, the circular economy 2.0, uh, as we call it, within the Green Deal. So uh, what can we um, expect uh, in terms of circular economy? Um, the focus um, definitely will be on a sustainable industry for a circular and climate neutral economy. This will include an EU industrial strategy uh, to be published by March 2020. We will see a new circular economy action plan, Circular Economy 2.0, um, to be also published by March 2020. 
Um, this will, and this also refers to what Isabel said, uh, we will have a sustainable products initiative which will target the sustainable performance of non-energy related products uh, value chains. Also, of course, with the aim to um, actually empower the consumer to make sustainable choices. We um, will have a new eco-design working plan, um, as well as new initiatives for greening the um, information and communication technology sector. Um, in total, the focus will lie on um, eight product groups um, that were identified um, to have uh, the potential to close the loop. Um, that includes um, food, packaging, electronics, transport, furniture, building, apparel, textiles and chemicals. And then you have um, from um, more specific information on two possible future legislations. Directives, um, the first is a commission proposal for a directive on sustainable corporate governance, um, which would then aim to engage companies in ensuring a sustainable economy and improving the competitiveness um, by fostering long-term and responsible corporate behavior. Um, so this will be part of a wider European Green Deal package and it will establish an EU-wide set of rules for businesses. Um, so that could, um, that is one information we received um, for a more concrete um, uh, legislative proposal. Um, the second one refers to the consumer empowerment, which is really a very a central uh, focus and uh, within um, the new commission mandate. Um, so to empower consumers um, to play an active role in the green decision, um, it is important to enable informed choices for sustainable products. Um, and the ways that this will be done is by simple and easy to understand information, for example, in forms of labels. Um, it will streamline the regulatory obligation on transparency of products when it comes to their durability and repairability. And it will also clarify consumer rights regarding, for example, repair services. So this is not completely um, set in stone, this information, but it is information that we received from different contexts and also from um, some uh, draft documents. Um, again, perfect. So, yeah, so, the, so, so much to the um, Green Deal and some uh, information that we could already give you, as, as already said. On the 11th of December, we will uh, know uh, more and we'll have really some concrete uh, information. Um, so just uh, to uh, finish um, our uh, presentation, we would like to emphasize that the industry is not driven only by um, uh, into circular economy by regulators, but actually industry to a big extent, not completely, but to a big extent is driving circular economy solutions. You can see this on the brand owners and the retailer side. And we just included some examples where you can really see that um, these are also solutions we want to put forward uh, within, within the new commission mandate in a circular um, economy. Um, so one is our example from the brand side on the AIM Brands Lunching for Good initiative. So how brands inspire consumers towards more sustainable and healthier lifestyles. Um, furthermore, we also have um, a fact sheet on how brand manufacturers actually, or what brand manufacturers do to drive sustainability, looking into the investments and the innovation um, that brands do for equity design, recyclability, increased recycled content. Uh, brands started looking into reuse concepts, um, but also, of course, important, the engagement of the consumer within circular economy and to facilitate sustainable production processes and supply chains. On the retailer side, I think uh, Isabel can give some examples. Yes, indeed. So, uh, well, everything is hyperlinked because I, I think we need to, to conclude. Uh, but indeed, I want to uh, just echo what Eva said. Uh, we are, there's two trends. One is uh, coming from uh, the top and it's more regulatory trend to, to kind of shift into the secular business model, but there's definitely a recognition of the retailer's impact on people's lifestyles and or yeah, lifestyle on, on, and, and choice of life. And this is where I think we can promote what is happening on the ground. And uh, I have listed uh, in the last two bullet points some, some examples, and I'm happy to go into details uh, later on during the Q&A.
So thank you both of you, Eva and Isabel, for having done uh, the job together, AEM and Eurocommerce. Uh, it has been uh, really rich and insightful. Uh, I'm sorry, I think we won't have time for Q&A. So if you have any Q&A, uh, you can send them to Jay uh, and we will answer uh, to you by email. Uh, just to finish the webinar, I wanted to present you some of um, our work in the uh, Institut du Commerce uh, slash uh, ECF France. Um, to, we have uh, been working since 2018 uh, on circular economy, and we have put all the information available uh, uh, that we've been working on on uh, a special dedicated uh, web page. Uh, you have the link here. On this web page, you can find context definition, what does it take for retail and consumer products good, good uh, but also uh, some of the working group uh, in progress. Uh, so we have been working on uh, uh, several uh, topics and I will present you two of them, um, Material ID and, and uh, the Collective Collect and Recycling Point of Sales Displays for uh, Perfumery uh, Stores. Um, we also have been working on eco-responsible shopper journey, uh, on the uh, eco-designed uh, point of sales displays guide, and we have launched a working group on inverse logistics. Next slide, please. So uh, the first uh, focus I wanted to show you is uh, that Institute of Commerce is supporting an initiative from our members uh, with a platform called uh, CycleApp. Uh, this platform is uh, now uh, only a test in the city of Lyon, uh, but uh, it should help organizing uh, as a, for a multi, uh, multi brand and multi retailers platform. Uh, the, the first collective recycling program of Pont of Sales display in France. So for now, it's only for a perfumery. But uh, we are making all the tests to see uh, what is working and what is not working. If you want some more information, you can click on the link. And the second uh, topic uh, we've been working on is a uh, creation of a material ID to enhance multiple lives of products and packaging. So we will have uh, an illustration on the right that will be ready next week. And uh, the idea is to uh, to give access to all the information that allows shoppers to make informed purchases, to enlighten retailers and manufacturers' progress on eco-design and responsible innovation, and to help recycling program to be more efficient. Uh, so for that, we need to gather all this information and uh, to make them available for all these actors. And last slide, please, next slide. So thank you for your attention. Um, this uh, was the first webinar of a series of three webinars. Next webinar will be in January with Kanta and Jean Bouteille uh, and ICR Austria, and you will know more information on consumer demand. Uh, and uh, the last webinar will be in February with Consumer Goods Forum, Lookout, a retailer and ICR Italy, uh, to uh, discover business cases for uh, the retail and consumer goods sectors. Uh, all the information are on ECR community website. Next slide, please. And uh, you will find on this slide uh, contact information. If you have any question or uh, if you need some more information, you can contact Shay for ECR community. Uh, if you want to register for the next webinars, you can click on the link. Same you click uh, at first uh, to, to be there today. And uh, if you want to know if your local uh, ECR organization is working on circular economy, uh, you can contact directly your ECR uh, national organization or you can contact Che. Uh, and uh, if uh, nothing is uh, on in your country, you just need to ask your ECR local organization uh, if it's uh, important for you to launch a circular economy project. So thanks a lot, everyone, uh, for this uh, uh, really uh, uh, insightful information. Uh, have a good afternoon, and we'll put the video uh, recorded uh, on our website, too. Bye. Thank you. Bye.